Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss if investment watches are a real thing. If so, what models you should pick and other things to consider when using something that you enjoy wearing to sell at a profit later on. <laughs> before we get started, I should note that I'm not an investment advisor. And if you want investment advice, get a licensed advisor. We are on the other hand, classic style connoisseurs. And watches have been part of the classic style world for many decades. In recent years, watches have become particularly popular with millennials because when buying a home seems utterly out of reach, you can still reward yourself or a loved one with a nice luxury timepiece. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing is something I leave up to you, but it's definitely a thing that's happening right now. Like many things you enjoy, deep down you may wonder, can you have your cake and eat it too? Wouldn't it be awesome if you could justify spending money on something you really want, then wear it every day, enjoy it, and build wealth at the same time? Case in point, the concept of investment watches is not new. Rolex sports watches, Audemars Piguet, notably the Royal Oak, and watches from Patek Philippe are known to hold or increase their value over time. In the list of the 100 most expensive timepieces ever sold at auction, only 17 of them were not Patek Philippe. Without a doubt, these were very special watches. But does investing also work with more widely available watches rather than, let's say, Paul Newman's Daytona or the Patek Philippe of the Emperor of Ethiopia? First of all, what exactly do we mean when we talk about investment? It's a term that is widely used, but at its core, it means that you buy something with the intention to get a higher return in the future. Sometimes though, people talk about investing when they buy something that simply makes them feel good. And if you just quickly search on YouTube, you'll find a bunch of videos that'll tell you watches are a great investment. And I agree with them because sometimes I really want to show off what a baller I am with all my Rolex watches. All jokes aside, yes, if you're rich and you can afford the rare collectible Patek Philippe's and hold on to them and sell them at a later point in time, investing in watches is probably a good idea. Now, this concept is not limited to the watch market. Just think about rare instruments such as the ones from Stradivari or cars. If you bought a McLaren F1 in the 90s originally for 1 million, you can turn around and sell it today for 15 million. That's an awesome return. And there are many other cars. For example, the Ferrari 288 GTO or the Mercedes SLR Sterling Moss all increased significantly in value. Now try that with a Fiat Cinquecento, a Cadillac Escalade or a Mercedes S-Class. It's probably not going to work the same way. Why? Well, at the base, it's a numbers game. The highest prices usually are realized by things that are very rare and limited. Most people will never be able to afford them, and that's the very reason they fetch such high prices, because they're exclusive. So the big question is not, are watches a good investment, but are there investment watches that you can afford? First, let's start by digging into these seven underlying concepts of investing in watches, and then let's look at some specifics. First of all, you must have the money to participate in such a high-priced world. For example, if you buy a new Rolex Daytona, a Calatrava from Patek Philippe, and a Royal Oak, you'll probably have to estimate to pay around 60 grand. Once you've invested your money, you don't really need the money immediately, and you can wait until the price rises to a point where you feel comfortable selling. No one can predict the future, so you'll have to sit back and see how the market develops and when is the right time to sell. Now, often when you need to sell something, it's very hard to realize the true market value if there is not a standardized market like the stock market, for example. You better have a specialized knowledge about watches because even though a model may not change much from Rolex, there are certain details that make it much more valuable to collectors and certain colors and special things that are very, very important. Unlike with a stock, for example, where one stock from Tesla is exactly worth the same as another stock from Tesla. Four, you have to believe that watches don't just retain their value, but that they will grow in the future. 
In the 1970s, the Swiss watch market was close to extinction because of the introduction of quartz movement, which made it seem that mechanical movements became unnecessary and outdated. Of course, they turned it around by making mechanical watches a luxury good and focusing in on the craftsmanship. Certain companies like Rolex or the Trinity of watchmaking really became powerful brands. But the question is, will the kings of today be the kings of tomorrow? It looks like it, but you'll never know for sure. Five, you have to assume that the market will act as you predicted or as it has in the past. These are really the only two things you can go off. But in all truth, this is true for any kind of investment and not just for watches. Again, past behavior is no guarantee for future success. And Patek Philippe is really expensive today. It may not be tomorrow, even though the chances are very slim because they understand in order to retain their value, they have to keep it exclusive and not just flood the market with $300 Patek Philippe watches. It's all about keeping that brand cachet very high and unattainable for Joe Average. Six, you have to be willing to sell the watch at the right point in time and you can't really get attached to it or sentimental about it. Otherwise, you may sell it at the wrong point in time. After all, you only make money with an investment if you sell it at the right time. Seven, you also have to be able to sell your watches at a specific point in time to a certain buyer without an organized marketplace such as the stock market. Of course, you could argue there's tons of marketplaces like Chrono24, Bob's Watches, or even eBay, but the rates really fluctuate and it's not the same as the stock market where you can just decide at any point in time to just buy and sell. Sure, you can check out the prices on those secondhand platforms, but just because there's a list price that they have for their used watches doesn't mean that that's actually something that you realize or that you end up with if you subtract all the fees involved. So in order to successfully buy and sell watches for investments, all of these assumptions must be true. So can watches also be a good investment if your pockets aren't that deep? Well, the question is, how do you define deep pockets? If it means less than $5,000, watches are probably not a good investment for you. If you can spend about five dollars to $10,000, now you can probably start. If you get the right model of a Rolex in a stainless steel and you wear it and take care of it and you keep all the paperwork, chances are you'll be able to sell it at a profit 10 or 20 years down the line. To learn more about what specific models you have to buy and what you have to pay attention to, check it out our video here. If you like a watch below that price range, don't look at it as an investment. Look at it as a luxury good, as an accessory, something that you wear and unlike other things, like your suit or your shoes, it just won't depreciate as much in value, or most likely it won't. Also, if you bought a watch that you liked and it didn't increase in value, you at least get the joy out of looking at it and wearing it and be simply just happy about it. Naturally, if you just look at the development of the retail price, chances are they will go up due to inflation and other factors. But just because the retail price goes up doesn't mean that the used market street value rises as well. There may be a few exceptions to the rule. A Timex watch or a Max Bill watch from Jung Hans will likely not get you that big return that you're hoping for. What do you have money to spare, but you don't want to buy a Rolex because you don't like the look of it or you just don't want to be that kind of a person? Well, I think the reason most people are interested in investment watches is because they have a certain affinity to watches. Now, here are a few watches you can look at. They have shown to be popular for a number of years, prices have increased on a retail level, and chances are you should get a good rate even if you sell your used one and you bought it new. These are the Navitimer from Breitling, the Chrono Swiss Regulator, the Reverso A from JLC, or the Chronograph Omega Seamaster Professional. If you have more than 20 grand, you could look at the Lange 1 from A Lange und Söhne, the Nautilus from Patek Philippe, the Royal Oak Offshore from AP or the EWC Doppelchronograph Fliegeruhr. By the way, if you're curious how to pronounce watch brands the proper way, please check out this video here. So in a nutshell, are watches a good investments? Well, they're not a traditional investment vehicle because there's not an organized buy and sell market. Historically, the biggest price increases came from 
Patek Philippe watches that, that were very rare and expensive in the first place. If you can afford the right model of Rolex in a stainless steel, chances are you can wear it, enjoy it, and make more money back even if you sell it after years of use. You may even be able to make a profit with other brands, but it requires specialized knowledge and it's a bit more risky. At the end of the day, I'm a firm believer that investing in yourself pays the highest dividends. That being said, if watches aren't your thing, well, there are many other things you can invest money in and enjoy it, such as rings or fountain pens or even clothing. No, it's not an investment because it likely loses money, but it just brings you pleasure. In today's video, I'm wearing a relatively lightweight business suit out of a worsted wool with a fine orange or dark red stripe. I'm pairing it with a shirt with a club collar and it is white and gray striped, which works well with my suit. It also works well with my watch, which is a vintage Reverso watch from the 1930s from Miejeu de Coutre. And uh, I simply like it. I didn't buy it as an investment piece. I liked the look of it, the rectangular shape. I enjoyed the history around it. And it's simply something I like. And I bought it used in the first place. And chances are, if I ever wanna sell it, I'll probably realize what I paid for it but I don't look at it that way. It's just something that's part of my wardrobe and that's part of me. And maybe one day I'll hand it down to a child or grandchild. But it has a mix of woven and printed silk from Fort Belvedere, an orange and turquoise, which picks up the colors of my suit, but provide an interesting contrast. My socks are what we call the two-tone solids in burgundy and white. They have a nice, elegant sheen and the color palette slightly changes. Even though you have burgundy and white, you even get shades of gray when you look at them, depending on what direction the light is shining on. I decided to combine it with a pair of monk straps in black with silver buckles because the watch strap is also black and the watch is silver and I like to keep everything harmonious, which is why I chose cufflinks with a black onyx ball and a silver look, which is actually platinum, so it doesn't tarnish. And you can find them in our shop because they're from Fort Belvedere, just like the tie, the socks, and the white linen pocket square. 